Hey guys, Mike, your host of Craft Beer Storm. How are you doing today? It's Friday. That means we have craft brew news today, the news of the week in the beer world, the craft beer world, the drama. But first, I just want to remind you, we have a craft beer weekend at the Victoria Inn in Hampton, New Hampshire. Uh, beautiful inn. And um, Friday evening, it's a whole weekend. Friday evening, you get uh, food and beer pairings. Um, I will be there and uh, we'll give you a presentation on beer, history of beer, how to make beer. Um, we'll have another brewer in. We'll do some uh, QA. Saturday, we have a bus picking you up, and you go to a couple of breweries in the area. You go to like three breweries in the area, get some samples, and, and experience it live. And you have a dinner in the evening uh, at the Old Salt. You have a, uh, a certificate for a percentage off. And then the next day, you get a brunch. Kegs and eggs, beer mosas. It's good stuff. It's all weekend. Immersion in craft beer. It's good. So go to uh, www. Uh, craftbeerstorm.com and you get the link and sign up today it's awesome stuff uh, and that will be happening October 25th 26th 27th at Victoria Inn alright here's the news courtesy of Brewbound brewbound.com uh, first story Brewdog USA to, on track to double sales in 2019 Brew, Brewdog is kicking butt man everything they do is great Scottish craft brewers Brewdog are on pace to double its U.S. business this year. In an email to Brewdog USA Wholesalers, Chief Revenue Officer Adam Lambert reported uh, the company's depletion of sales for re- retailers increased 95% through the first eight months of the year. Companies also sold more than 320,000 case equivalents, a lot of beer. Brewdog's U.S. home, uh, Ohio, uh, where it built a 100,000-square-foot production facility, accounts for 55% of its domestic business, and in-state sales are growing at a rate of 80%. Wow. Sales of the core IPAs Elvis Juice and Hazy Jane are up 104% and 95% respectively, year-to-date. Grapefruit-infused Elvis Juice now represents nearly half, 49% of Brew Dogs USA's business, while the New England-style I- IPA Hazy Jane makes up about 22% of its business. Sales of BrewDog's flagship Punk IPA, which accounts for 8% of the company businesses, are flat. So that, that Elvis juice is kicking butt. Lambert noted that 16-ounce cans continue to drive BrewDog's total growth and represent 9% of its total business. So the cans, everyone's cans. In 2020, BrewDog is projecting its upward sales trajectory to continue. As Lambert told wholesalers that the company's goal is to once again double its business. So they want, they doubled it this year and they want to double it again. Wow. Super growth. There, go BrewDog. Uh, Wirebacker reorganization plan shows private uh, investor group backed out and inv- internal investors are in. So Wirebacker, what's going on? Private investment group uh, announced... A majority investor in Meyerbacher uh, Brewing Company this past April has backed out of a deal. The brewery's chief operating officer, Josh Lampke, told Brewbound. Instead of the Eastern Pennsylvania-based craft brewery has turned to a group of seven individuals and two trusts to invest $50,000 in exchange for shares in the business, according to a reorganization plan uh, filed in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court in Pennsylvania Eastern District. I don't know, fifty thousand dollars is a, it's not well, not a lot. Fifteen eighteen holdings abandoned plans to to buy a majority stake of Weyerbacher, the twenty four year old craft brewery that sold as many as nineteen thousand five hundred forty three barrels at its most recent peak in two thousand fourteen, shortly after the company filed for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy in April. So there's trouble there. I've been going at it on our own. Uh, we've been, we've got a lot of beer coming out and we're making headway and getting everything back in stock, which is a good thing. He added Weyerbacher also owns 1.9 million, uh, to other creditors, but those claims are unsecured and the company plans to, uh, pay back a total of 186,000 according to the reorganization plan. Uh, Lampy, uh, said that been no layoffs at Weyerbacher since the company laid off two salespeople in February. And the company has no plans to close retail locations in Easton, where it operates a 30,000-barrel production facility, uh, brewery and taproom. 
or in New Hope, where uh, it opened a stand uh, earlier this year inside a food hall and a local market. So Lampy said, we are still working through our issues, but my main focus is the future of the company and making sure we are able to uh, keep putting out great beer. They do make excellent beer. It's sad to hear what's happening there, but um, we'll see what happens. We'll keep keep uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, Texas Brewers report boost from beer to go sales legalizations. We did this uh, earlier uh, um, this year. We have a, an article on that. So, 18 days after Texas new beer uh, near beer to go law went into effect, manufacturing brewers are reporting high levels of consumer enthusiasm for the opportunity to buy and take home packaged beers from tap rooms. After passing through Texas legislature in the spring and being signed by the governor in June, the law allowing the state's licensed brewing uh, manufacturing breweries to sell beer to go went into effect September 1. Prior to the change, only brewers holding brew pub license that produced fewer than 10,000 barrels could sell patrons beer for off-premise consumption. The new law allows customers to purchase up to one case of 12-ounce cans per brewery visit daily. So they're limiting breweries and what they're they're still limiting them, but it means it's a step in the right direction. Uh, Particulus Brewing Company f- uh, founder Michael Particulus said sales during the two weeks since the change in the law were uh, the best in the eight-year-old Dallas-based uh, beer company's history. Particularly an attorney turned brewer, huh, was a vocal <laughs> proponent of the uh, changing of the law. I'm like a CPA turned brewer. I'm still a CPA, though. I don't know. We're, we're fed up with that stuff, so we want to brew. But that's cool. It was a huge team effort to get this thing from concept to actually opening up on the September uh, 1, uh, which ultimately is the single business day we've ever had in our history. So that happened, and then boom, everybody came in and bought beer. Austin Beer Works, the co-founder Adam uh, DeBauer, um, told Brewbound in an email that the passage shows that with a well-thought-out and executed game plan, normal people, in fact, still move the needle on laws that govern our lives. So it's a small movement, but uh, they got it done, man. They got they got the laws changed, and I think it's just a start. Because it's very restrictive in Texas. I mean, come on. These states, it's state by state. So whatever, it'll change as time goes on. Uh, last story, truly hard seltzer named official hard seltzer of the NHL. Boston Beer Company today announced that uh, it inked a five-year deal of truly hard seltzer to be the official hard seltzer of the National Hockey League, the whole league. The agreement is uh, Boston Beer's uh, uh, first National Sports League partnership. That's cool. The sponsorship will begin at the start of the 2019-2020 season uh, on October 7th, uh, 2nd, and it will give the brand exposure both – to both uh, through broadcasts and stadiums during the regular season, Stanley Cup playoffs, Stanley Cup final. Uh, Truly will also sponsor the Truly Hard Seltzer NHL pregame during the 2020 Bridgestone uh, NHL Winter Classic as well as the 2020 at NHL Stadium Series. NHL Chief Business Officer and Executive President, uh, Vice President Keith Wachtel, Send a press release. As the beer category continues to evolve, we're thrilled to become the first National Sports League partner of the Boston Beer Company. With a thriving business across multiple categories, they are an ideal partner to engage the Avon Fad base. We're excited to develop fun and unique um, activations across the portfolio brands. In December 2017, Boston Beer uh, and the Boston Red Sox announced a multi-year Agreement to make Sam Adams the official beer of the Boston Red Sox. So, so there you go, Boston beer, Sam Adams. Getting into other industries as well, beer, cider, uh, spiked seltzer. I mean, they're, they're doing well. They're doing well. That's what I have for you today. That's our news. If you like what we're doing, go on to uh, iTunes. Give us a rating. Give us a review. It takes two seconds, five stars. Everything will be okay. Um, <laughs> tell a friend, tell 10 friends, check out the, uh, the crappy weekend we're doing Victoria Inn, October 25th, 26, 27. Great immersion. 
food and beer. We pick you up. We take you everywhere. And everything will be okay. Great weekend. Women, buy for your men. Men, take your women. Uh, it'd be a good thing. Okay, guys, that's what I have for today. I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you on Monday. Take care.